Good day, this is Sandra here with the second episode of A for Anarchy. Uh, today I will have some questions and answers and also some news. Uh, it's great weather outside, just trying to haul at the time now. But seriously, it's very hot, very nice. So uh, I might not have prepared as much as I should have done. But anyway, here we go. The first question is from Surgeon. He asks, who will build the roads? It's a great question. No, it's not. It's a terrible question. We hear it all the time. As if the roads, they're like, you know, why why shouldn't private uh, people be able to build uh, roads? They've been able to build fantastic things. Spaceships. But roads, that's apparently impossible to build. No, but I guess it's the entire uh, structure, how all these uh, private roads will connect. And I guess it's a fair question. Well, we already see private uh, people, private investors, building roads. <clears throat> you know, tall roads, especially. Or just roads to uh, uh, houses that's uh, not in the interest of the government to build. So, uh, I guess it's a question of profit when it comes to, especially large roads, you need toll, you know, if you want to drive on somebody's road, you'll have to pay for it, and uh, other than that, there's no magic uh, to roads, they might be subsidized by having commercials by the road, you know, signs, and, uh, yeah, signs, or just, uh, you know, stores uh, might subsidize uh, the road, the use of the road. You know, it's free to use air conditioning in a, a mall. You know, maybe the roads will, some roads might be free to travel on. Others will probably cost money depending on the number of people using the roads and uh, the owners. But uh, I do not really view this as a uh, very large problem in a, in a society without a central centralized government or any kind of government really. So yeah, I I am definite definitely sure that private citizens will go together or not citizens anymore, they're citizens of no place I guess. That private people. People that have a shared interest in having roads so they can, you know, go places, will build roads, and, uh, yeah, not a problem. The second question is also from Surgeon. How will the free society protect itself from, you know, I guess, uh, either terrorists or state terrorists, you know, the government, other governments? You know, they have interest in taking over land areas, of course, and uh, international organizations like the UN might uh, think it's a bad thing that uh, there's a society without a government. So other, uh, gover uh, other no, governments and other countries might have an interest in taking over this free society. Well, one could, for example, go together and start militias. Uh, of course there won't be any central rules on gun ownership. Of course there will be neighborhoods where guns are banned, you know, more friend no kid friendly neighborhoods and uh, uh, areas that uh, won't allow gun use on their property. But uh, in a free society it will still be possible to get a hold of good guns and uh, with all these guns in the hands of uh, plenty of people it will be very hard for a government to go in and take control over it when they'll be constantly fighting in the streets with the people with machine guns uh, it's a terrible investment to even try to claim such an area and take over it, especially if the people in this free society want it to be free. If it's a 
say the Free State Project has been able to uh, topple the New Hampshire regime, <laughs> uh, then the people will, be, will want freedom and will fight for it. And uh, with no regulations on guns or weapons, uh, it's not that hard to protect the society, really. And, uh, you know, most people have an interest in being safe. They would want to be safe. So, they would go together, either personally investing their time uh, or money into a firm uh, or, uh, you know, private defense or organization or whatever, which would protect the, you know, the area. Or, you know, uh, there's uh, plenty of stuff other than that you could do too, I guess. You could be, have, uh, you know, threaten other countries with bombs. I know. It's, uh, it's very hard to fight lots of people in that uh, fashion. And of course, if uh, you do have bombs or rockets in uh, dangerous. Uh, long distance weapons uh the leaders of uh, uh other countries will probably not be uh, as keen on attacking considering that they might die uh <laughs> so that's also a great deterrent i would say and you know it's very hard to for for example a government to defend them, taking over an area killing lots of people to their citizens. So I do not think another or a country would go in and try to take over uh, a voluntary society. However, terrorists might be another thing. They'll be fighting, you know, guerrilla warfare perhaps. Uh, but I think uh, you'd have uh, the same organizations funded through the citizens of the areas through their mutual interest in being safe uh, protecting the areas uh, in various ways probably depending on the organizations uh, but still there's I do not think there's many terrorists that have a lot of interest in in uh, fighting you know, <laughs> yeah, just people living in peace uh, so it would probably more an issue with thieves and that issue is definitely not solved with the state. So it's a great argument to end the state now. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, in Norway at least, the, the crime rate is uh, extremely high and the police are barely able to solve any crimes except drug crimes, which is one of the reasons why the police here is very keen on keeping the, uh, the drugs illegal. It gives them great state stats. You know they are able to solve like 60, 70 percent of all drug crimes, and uh, that boosts their stats. So the police have a vested interest in keeping drugs illegal, uh, and they also get you know funding. But uh, in a free society, you wouldn't pay the police. You you'd be a moron to. Pay, try to pay the police to like stop your neighbor from doing drugs. It just wouldn't work. For one thing, he has the right to his own body and property. Uh, well, maybe not the right. I, I don't generally believe in uh, natural rights or whatever. Uh, I just believe that people have their own morals and they should be able to follow those morals like they feel fit to do. But anyway, uh, you do not. You wouldn't pay a police to, you know, beat up a kid for smoking a joint. <laughs> That's madness. Then you really have to be a psychopath. And especially in a free society where you are the one that pays for it, and it's not just spread out through the entire population. You would have no interest at all in uh, doing such immoral acts. Uh, but it's a good question. How to, you know protect the people in a voluntary society. Uh, I have a third question 
from uh, a guy named Hivar. He asks, um, how do you keep uh, relations uh, with other countries, for example, ambassadors and such? You know, how will the free society interact with um, uh, other countries? Well, in this, uh, in the 21st century, we have great uh, uh, resources that we can use to talk to other people. But I do not really think uh, uh, working with their, their government or, uh, you know, discussing with their government is really something that people in a voluntary society would be very interested in. For the first thing, we, that's what we want to escape, right? The, the government. But uh, with other people, you know, we could, you could have, you, you have friends, you know, that you talk to, and uh, of course, but the biggest uh, sort of uh, connection will probably, will probably be trade, you know, unless the government thinks it's dangerous to trade with free people, which it probably would, but I still think trade and, you know, just uh, personal relations. Uh, would uh, replace uh, all the national state uh, ambassador bullshit that we have today, you know. It's not uh, ambassadors, you know, just, it's just made to serve uh, the politicians in the countries and uh, corporations that have enough money to uh, bribe the politicians. So, I think that would, you know, be a lot more important. All right, so that's the questions I got this week. I hope I'll get more questions, you know, in the future. Like, like I said in my introduction, my show would be about uh, European news from an anarchist perspective. But um, I'll start with a not so European question uh, or issue. The Israel-Gaza uh, conflict that's escalating now. Now I know it's not Europe, but you know Israel is in the Eurovision, so they should count as Europe in this show. Yeah, I'll I'll be very liberal in that sense. <laughs> so what has happened is uh, three Israeli teens were killed in uh, the West Bank, I believe which made a national outcry for revenge from both politicians and people in the streets and later some uh, Jewish, ex Jewish extremists killed uh, and I guess uh, uh, basically burned a Palestinian teen and this led to a lot of tension between the two states, uh, if we can define Palestine as a state, well, it probably is, uh, at least practically. And Hamas or some other terrorist group has started bombing Israel and the Israeli or the Jewish Jewish populated areas in the area, which now has uh, led to full. Scale, uh, no, maybe not invasion, but uh, attacks from Israel. Uh, lots of bombing actions. 335, the last time I checked today. So this is a terrible, terrible conflict. Of course, hundreds of people dying each year directly caused by it. Probably thousands more indirectly, especially in Palestine. Now, if you go back and look at what happened. You see that uh, the imperialist states of Great Britain and France, you know, sep just uh, drew some lines and uh, randomly gave uh, this land to those guys and that land to those guys. And uh, the, uh, after the uh, World War Two and the Holocaust, the Jews got Israel and uh, as their land. And half of Palestine became Israel, and the other half became you know, Arab Palestine. Uh, this uh, greatly upset uh, the 
Arab population, as one probably can imagine. Uh, and uh, they get uh, fed up by the mass immigration by Jews. I think it's interesting to note that um, many leftists uh, think people that oppose mass immigration are racist, while they argue that the mass immigration of Jews into Palestine is terrible too. Why aren't they racist? So I think it's important to note that many left-wing people, especially here in Europe, are opposed to Jewish mass immigration, but not other kinds. Uh, great hypocritical bullshit from their part, absolutely. Well, anyway, all these Jews immigrated, which led to lots of pressure in the area, because all people were intolerant as fuck to Jews back then. And uh, the Arab population had many revolts and uh, uprisings, killing Jews and Jews killing Arabs. And this was also a lot before the creation of Israel and Palestine. Now, this uh, escalated in uh, the early years of Israel's existence into a war which almost push, pushed the Jewish population completely out, at least to the sea border. Um, but they fought back, and the same thing happened in 1967. Uh, and, you know, they have all these wars, Yom Kippur, and all bullshit, all happening because the imperialist states created borders. And uh, borders are a great way of separating people and fucking shit up, you know, like how Africa was created. Just drunk European overlords randomly plotting parts, basically, for what should be what. So, the problem with this conflict is the state, as usually is the problem with everything. <laughs> well, I can see that. It would be hard to just abolish the state right now in Israel and Palestine it, because the Jews and the Palestinian Arabs would not be friends immediately, definitely not. So one would have to either do it slowly or teach every single person in this area about, uh, I don't know, volunteerism and love for thy neighbor, which would help them a lot. I'm not a Christian, by the way, but uh, they should really love their neighbors instead of bombing them. I think it would be a very important step towards a solution to this uh, terrible conflict. Uh, and yeah, I think Israel probably should be a lot less hard on Palestine. They have the upper hand. They're murdering plenty of people. Plenty of people that definitely should not die. Now I know Hamas are assholes using civilians as protection, but that doesn't really make it right for you to for, for you to kill civilians. So I wouldn't put the, I'd put the blame on both parties, Intoler intolerant people, basically just extremists pushing the moderates apart from each other from both uh, both sides, uh, which lead to you know, uh, a trench war, metaphorically. Uh, but of course, Palestine also has a lot of blame. Uh, you know, rising up hate in the population and uh, not allowing free trade of any kind. Not that Israel allows free trade for Palestine either. Neither does Egypt, by the way. Egypt. Uh, might even be worse towards the Gaza Strip than what Israel is. Uh, it's uh, very hard to trade. And, you know, trade leads to prosperity. And since they're not allowed to trade, they fight. Like, uh, I think it was Frederick Bastiat that said uh, when uh, uh, goods do not cross borders, soldiers will. Which this is a very great example of that uh, uh, protectionism and statism leads to war 
no matter what, because people want to trade, people want to, you know, be free, walk around free without having to go to border checks, whatever. So while people maybe not to vote freedom or think freedom uh, specifically in a voluntarist uh, sense of the words, they want to be free. And uh, we see it, see that in this conflict. Yeah. Now uh, I'll go to Ukraine as well because you know there's these uprisings in Ukraine and they had uh, the Euro Maiden Madan. I'm I'm not good in Ukrainian. Sorry. Uh, but they had this stuff and the Crimean crisis. Well, it's basically just I don't know you. It's Russia fucking shit up as usual. That's what they're great at, you know, trying to take back old territory to reinstate the glory of either the Soviet Union or the glory of the old empire. And uh, you know, Putin is trying to make Ukraine <laughs> go into another civil war. It seems, you know, trying to pit, for example, the Jews and the Ukrainians up against each other, uh, especially in Odessa, for example. But uh, most uh, Ukrainians, at least uh, ethnically and linguistically Ukrainians, are fiercely against Putin, which makes sense. The, U the Russians would also be vehemently opposed to Putin as well. They're not. But uh, yeah, this is a conflict that uh, also can be traced back to the state, of course. Uh, during the Soviet Union, uh, one of the premiers of the Soviet Union uh, basically made uh, the Ukraine uh, much larger than it really is in, you know, in the dis when they sort of made it the new districts, Ukraine became much larger than it really should have been. And uh, when Ukraine became independent, they dragged with all this Russian territory in the east, which probably should not have been Ukrainian territory. Uh, and uh, this of course led to lots of resentment and uh, all the Russians voted for pro-Russia uh, parties like the part of regions which uh, is now toppled and gone basically and uh, the Ukrainians voted for well mainly liberal conservative parties that wanted to get closer to the EU and now in the latest uh, election they also voted for the nationalist and proto-fascist party freedom swoboda not very freedom loving people at all more into violent nationalism uh, so these two groups hate each other of course which leads to all this trouble now if the soviet union had dissolved and not became how was it 17 new republics i guess the Russian-speaking people would associate in the Ukraine would associate with the Russians, and they wouldn't be forced to live in Ukraine, and they could be free to associate with the people they themselves want to associate with. But of course, they couldn't, and shit hits the fan, of course, as one would assume. What will be interesting to see in the future is uh, what will happen in the Baltic states. Estonia and uh, Latvia and Lithuania have large Russian populations and uh, Putin has recently said that the Russians in Estonia are being uh, what do you want to say oppressed <laughs> like the Russians in Russia aren't oppressed Jesus but anyway one might see the Russians trying to get a foot in in Estonia as well maybe the other Baltic states maybe uh, you know, trying to get Belarus to join the Federation. So there's lots of things to see in the new imperialist Russia that uh, might happen in the future. Uh, yeah, that's the Ukraine crisis, I guess. Uh, I have not uh, anything planned for next week. I'll <laughs> follow on the news. And all questions are absolutely welcome. Uh, I will try to look into whatever I can and uh, stay
stay tuned, please. <laughs> uh, uh, this is a primary key and volunteer virtues, and uh, I'm out.